Hey guys, welcome back. We're back working on our combat system. This week, we're going to take a look at reaction damage and talk about loose gameplay tags. Let's get started. Reaction damage in the Hubworld MMO comes from applying certain statuses when we attack, and then when another status would be applied, then there's a reaction between the two. So water attacks apply wet, uh, which increases ability cooldowns. Ice attacks apply cold, which is a slight movement speed reduction. Fire attacks apply burning, which is a small fire damage over time. And lightning attacks apply electrified, which is a slight movement speed increase. Now what happens here is that for a certain amount of time after that attack happens of that certain elemental time. And it's not going to matter the direction. So like this first one here is vaporized. So it won't matter if there's water and you add fire. It'll be the same as if there's fire and you add water, right? So in the water case, it would have the wet status. And then when the fire attack came, it was going to apply burning. Instead of applying burning, it would go, oh, there's already a wet status. It would remove the wet and the burning. And then it would um, do vaporize, which in this case multiplies whatever that second attack was by the 1.5 times damage. Same thing, water or ice, doesn't matter the order. It's going to apply frozen, just a short duration, no movement at all. Uh, and then we've got water and lightning, which is going to apply electrocute, which is 1.2 times damage and a random chance to apply a charge status. Fire and ice, when those combine, uh, it will be melt. This is the one that we're actually going to start working on today. It's a 1.3 times damage, and we're applying the wet status. Fire and lightning will create firestorm which causes explosions doing random medium range AOE fire and lightning damage. And then we have here ice and lightning, which is superconduct, which is going to reduce defense for a short duration. In most cases, we apply gameplay tags as part of our gameplay effects. But in some cases, we may want to apply a gameplay tag directly to the ability system component. Loose gameplay tags likely work best for infinite states that only change when some other event happens. Duration-based states, like I show in this video, would be a poor use of loose gameplay tags because we need that gameplay effect to control the removal after the duration is over. So the way that I'm going to be showing it in this video is not what we're going to stay with. Uh, I just wanted some kind of example that I could show loose gameplay tags. It's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. There's a little bit of info out there, and some of the info that's out there is wrong. Uh, what you'll often hear people say is loose gameplay tags can't be replicated. It, better to say they're not replicated on their own automatically, but they can't be replicated uh, or not replicated depending on your needs. And we're going to take a look at how that works. These are primarily handled by using these functions. We have add replicated loose gameplay tag, and then there's also a remove version of that and a set, set is for setting the count, set count version. This one replicates to proxy clients and owning client, um, but keep in mind it does not update the server when run from the server. This is a little bit weird. You're like, wait, it updated the replicated, but it didn't update the server and I ran it on the server. And so you actually have to pair it with add, the add remove uh, or set count version of loose gameplay tag, which uh, we'll see below, uh, to add to the server as well. Uh, then there's also an add minimal replicated gameplay tag version. Um, now this one does not have a set count. It can only do an add or remove. And it replicates to proxy clients. It skips the owning client. Uh, it's going to work good in this case because we're using it on a mob. Um, it, but it also does not update the server when run from the server. So you also have to pair it with add, remove, uh, loose gameplay tag to add to the server as well. And then the final one here is the one that doesn't do any replication at all. you got add loose gameplay tag, remove remove loose gameplay tag and set loose gameplay tag count. And these just, if you call it on the client, it sets it on the client. If you call it on the server, it sets it on the server. Nothing's replicated. Um, but by using these different ones, we can uh, control where it's replicated to. Let's go take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so we are in our HW combat attribute butte set.cpp file. And you'll see I set up some multipliers here for our reaction damage. I'm setting the multipliers all to one so that by default they don't do anything. Because if we just keep multiplying something by one, it doesn't do anything. I'll scroll down here and show you what that does. So you can see here that it says apply damage multipliers. We take the 
magnitude here, okay, of the incoming damage, and we multiply it by vaporize, electrocute, and melt. They're all one, so by default, they do nothing. So then if we come here, we'll see that we actually have melt in two places. I think at some point we'll probably refactor this so that we don't have to duplicate uh, this code. But, you know, it's actually different enough. We'll probably end up leaving it. So basically this one says, okay, does the target have the burning tag, right? Does it already have the burning status? And then it says, is the incoming damage ice damage? Okay, so that's one way that the reaction could happen. The other way down here says, do they have the cold tag and the incoming damage is fire, right? So in both places, it's melt. And you can see we set this melt damage multiplier times 1.3, right? So that's going to end up uh, applying the 1.3 multiplier to the damage, as we saw down below. Then we need to do a few different things. And so we're going to take a look at this one here. So we would need to remove the burning tag from what is going to be applied. This isn't working yet. There's some reasons why this doesn't doesn't work. Um, and we're going to actually have to go with a whole different method to get this to work. Uh, one of the things that I do is I always start with the simplest way to do something using the built-in gameplay abilities uh, systems. And then I get to go to the point where it stops working, right? And then at that point you go, okay, now we need something custom. And so this is one we're going to need something custom, but I'll show you the, the simple version that I started with. Um, so that still needs to be implemented. But we do have here, we have remove active effects with granted tag. Okay, so remember that you have effect tags and then you have granted tags. So this is not the tag on the effect, it's the tag that the effect will grant. We'll take a look at that in the blueprint. And then that's removing the game, any gameplay effects that have the cold tag, right? So it's removing any of them that were granting cold, there should only be one. Um, in this case, I believe the effect is called apply cold for six seconds. And then we need to add the wet tag, right? And so here we're going to add it as a loose gameplay tag, and we're going to use add minimal replication gameplay tag. Now, I've remmed out the add loose gameplay tag because I want to show you what that does. So let's take a look. So what I've done here is I've gone into our blueprint test mob and the gameplay ability system debugger shows effects and abilities but it doesn't show tags it's kind of weird i would have added an extra an extra category that you could go through and show the tags but I, they don't so i just went in here and on event tick i have it doing the client and the server and basically going okay show the wet tag show if it's applied in the count cold tag if it's applied in the account and the count, burning tag if it's applied, and the count. And so if we start this up, and we're gonna be watching this combat log. So you can see there that it's printing the client and the server. It's got six entries there. You can see it's showing the wet, cold, burning, and they're just zero, 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 zero. So if we do this one, you can see that now on the client, it's being set to one, for cold. And you can see that it's also setting it on the server. Now, the reason that that's working is because a gameplay effect is applying that, okay? And then after six seconds, you see it went back to zeros, okay? But now we're gonna do within six seconds, we're gonna apply the cold, and now we're gonna apply the burning. And you can see that on the client, it set the wet stat, uh, tag to true, but you can see on the server, it's still false. And that's because we don't have that add loose gameplay tag. So let's go swap that back and we'll try it again. So we're coming back to the code here and we're gonna unrem this out. And so now it's pairing those up like I talked about. Add loose gameplay tag will add it to the server and then add minimal replication gameplay tag will replicate that loose gameplay tag to the proxy client. Let's compile. Okay, we're going to try the same test again, but now we have the uh, add loose gameplay tag. And so we're going to quickly, I'm going to do the uh, cold attack and the fireball attack. Now, the fireball attack visually is looking the same, but I'll show you in a minute here how I basically just duplicated it and changed the, the types. 
So we're doing the one, there it is. We're doing the second one. And now you can see that on the server and the client, it added the wet tag. Now the problem here is that the wet tag is never going away, right? Nothing is ever coming and removing it and it doesn't expire on its own. So now you can see that the cold tag did expire after the six seconds, but the wet tag is never going away. And this is why, because these things are supposed to last for a limited amount of time, gameplay effects are the right way to handle these, not using loose gameplay tags. But I wanted something to be able to show loose gameplay tags. I do think there is a use case for them. It just might be a rather small case. So let's go take a look at how I have this set up. So in the ability system, we had the ability called Icicle, right? And it applied Icicle damage. So all I did was just duplicate that, call it Fireball, it still visually looks like the other, and everything's pretty much the same, except now it's applying Fireball damage. So if we go to the Fireball damage effect, you can see that I have swapped out a couple things here. So I've swapped out the damage type, which is an effect asset tag to fire. And instead of doing the conditional gameplay effect, apply cold for six seconds, I do apply burning for 10 seconds. Now, the problem I was talking about earlier here is that unfortunately, there's no easy way to remove the conditional gameplay effect in the attribute set when you go to apply it. And there's actually a really good reason for this. They have it, you, you, can, you can query them, you can see what's being uh, added, um, but they actually give you a const uh, pointer to it. And so you can't actually make any changes. And there's a really good reason for that, is that the conditional gameplay effects are a predictive, meaning that you would be applying it on the, on the Odin client. And then when you get to the server, you'd be in the attribute set saying, no, I'm not gonna apply it. And you'd basically mess up the prediction. So. In our case, because these things that are being applied, they really can't be predicted because we don't know whether it's a reaction or not, right? And so what we're gonna have to do in this case is we're basically gonna have to have this effect get added on the attribute set from the server side, non-predicted. And so if this conditional gameplay effects is very useful in cases where you can have an effect that is predicted, right? Where you know that, hey, this is gonna happen, uh, particularly if it's doing required source tag matching. Um, but in this case, the conditional gameplay effect isn't the right way to do this. So we'll end up in the future uh, changing this and actually applying this from the attribute set itself so that we have control over whether it does apply or doesn't apply. Um, because the idea of having it apply it by default and then having the attribute set say, no, no, it was a reaction, don't apply it, isn't an option in our case. I wanted to show you one other thing here too. I'm not sure if I've covered this before. Um, this is super useful, um, but in this case, unfortunately it wasn't that useful, is that there is a show debug ability system. I can use the page up or page down to switch between my targets. So I hit page up and it goes to, to the mob. And then I can hit tilde again and do next and you see ability system debug next category. So that on the screen is showing um, the attribute set values, which is pretty cool just to be able to see those. Uh, the next one is showing the gameplay effects, right? And so you can see there's a regen effect and a stamina regen effect. And then uh, the last category is um, the abilities themselves, right? And I think they actually, if I attack, you can see it shows information from them, though it's there so, so short, uh, it doesn't necessarily do a lot, but I wanted, wanted to show you guys that. I wish it had another one that said, hey, here's the tags, right? And then I wouldn't have had to have this nonsense of stuff printing every two seconds down in the log, but um, it doesn't. So um, unfortunately I couldn't do it that way, but I did wanna, I did wanna show that because I do think that's a pretty cool um, debugging tool. So that was uh, the start of our reaction damage. We'll continue to build out more of those. I think maybe next week what we'll do is uh, we will have a visual representation of those states, wet, cold, um, electrified, and burning, and some kind of visual effect. And that'll make it a whole lot easier for us to test with too, because we'll be able to visually see it on screen and won't have to rely on things in the log. And then we'll also go and we'll swap those conditional gameplay effects um, for a system, a more complicated system where 
our code is actually doing the uh, effect applying for that rather than um, using the built-in system to do that. Um, but I did want to talk about loose gameplay tags just because I think it's something that doesn't doesn't get talked about a lot. Um, there are some other things that are cool about them too, is that sometimes you may want to apply a gameplay tag to the server and you may not want to replicate it, right? It might be something that the server internally needs to know that you want to use to save state, but there's no reason to send it uh, to the proxy client or the owning client because there's there's no visual representation, right? Um, or there's nothing nothing that it changes. And so by adding that gameplay tag as a loose gameplay tag, if you added a gameplay effect, it's getting replicated and it's going to cost you network bandwidth. But by adding it as a loose gameplay tag, you know, very little cost, uh, no no network bandwidth cost. You're really just, just saying, hey, here's an extra tag in our map uh, locally. And so I do think that, that can be useful. And then in some cases you may say, oh, you know, I do want to add a, a loose gameplay tag, but I do need some replication. And so you can use that that minimal replicated uh, gameplay tag in a lot of cases. And that's still going to be cheaper than the gameplay tag and the gameplay effect because the gameplay effect does have some overhead. Now, in our case, we need a duration base, so we need that gameplay effect to control that duration. Um, but if you have something else, maybe maybe death status um, might be one uh, where we look at that because it's something that doesn't, end on its own after some duration, most likely, although maybe it does, I don't know. Maybe there's gonna be a respawn and, and death does that, although there might be something else that controls that, we'll have to see. I haven't really decided on the how the death mechanics are going to work yet, so we'll have to see. Um, but I wanted to cover that loose gameplay tag replication. If you have any questions related to this video, please leave your questions in the comments section. The Open World Server and Hub World MMO Discord link is in the video description if you want to discuss something in this video further. Like and subscribe to be notified of future videos and to help with the algorithm. Until next time, have a good one.